to debate Osborne's priorities are two of the UK's most respected economists. Roger Bootle, Managing Director of Capital Economics, Special Advisor to the House of Commons Treasury Committee and a former Group Chief Economist at HSBC. And alongside him is a man who once served as Chief Economist of the Cabinet Office. Jonathan Portis is now Director of the National Institute of Economic and Social Research. Welcome, uh, gentlemen, to you both. And so, Roger, if I can start with you, I know that you've described him as a, a consummate political operator. Obviously, it's Mr. Osborne's job not just to deliver the budget but convince us all that it's a very good idea. But is he just robbing Peter to pay Paul? I think that's what he, he will be doing, yes, because in some cases he'll be robbing Peter to pay Peter. Uh, there simply isn't enough money to go around. If he's going to stick to his overall fiscal objectives, and I think he is, he's got to somehow or other conjure up a bit of money in one hand in order to dish it out with the other. What do you think, Jonathan? Is there any room for any sort of giveaway in terms of some well, well, moderate... I think there is scope uh, in economic terms for a significant fiscal stimulus if the Chancellor would, uh, would listen. I don't think that's what he's going to do. But he could perfectly well have a temporary cut in, for example, national insurance contributions for the low paid, which would actually do something to create jobs, or he could substantially increase infrastructure investment in the short term. Neither of those would make any difference at all to his chances of hitting his own fiscal target of balancing the budget in structural terms by 2016-17, which is the long, quite sensibly, the medium term target that he has his, his eye fixed on. It Roger, do you think that there is scope for further fiscal stimulus, as Jonathan says, and you know that actually boosting spending on things like infrastructure, and if so, where would that money come from? Well, Jonathan and I don't disagree on this actually very much. I think the dispute is all about what the possible impact might be in the financial markets. I tend to be more worried about that than Jonathan, but I think his argument is actually a fair one. That there's a good, straightforward Keynesian case for spending a bit more money in these circumstances, and if the money is properly targeted, it doesn't even offend against George Osborne's uh, rule. However, uh, that's not necessarily the way the markets are going to see it. And if you're particularly concerned about that, and I would be, then it's probably best not to try. And I suppose, Jonathan, to an extent, that argument is bolstered by the downgrade warnings that we've had from Fitch and Moody's. I know that you're smiling there, but I mean, I suppose there are those that are concerned about the impact that that would have on well, UK I don't think costs. I don't think anyone uh, takes the rating agencies <laughs> remotely seriously, and I think on this, Roger and I agree. Of course, we should, we should, and I agree with Roger. We do have to be concerned about financial markets in general. The idea we should worry about the rating agency downgrades. Remember, um, as I pointed out in a, in a blog post, uh, Fitch were the ones who in uh, um, late 2007 said that uh, AAA subprime mortgage sub securities were yeah. absolutely fine. There was nothing to worry no, about. But, Why but would Jonathan, you pay any make, attention to no, them? No, but they still make some valid points about the state of the UK economy right now. They say that we're vulnerable to weak. possible sh shocks in the Eurozone. It's correct, but then also, I suppose, to an extent, this boosts the argument for George Osborne staying the course in terms of fiscal consolidation. Um, no, I don't think so. I think that the weakness of growth and in particular the prospect of sustained high unemployment. I'm not that worried, to be honest, about growth in the next year or so. That's going to be a little, hopefully, positive, but not, not racing away. Um, but the real thing that we should be worried about as an economy and society is the high level of unemployment, especially youth unemployment, for the foreseeable future. And I'd like to see George Osborne doing something about that rather than worrying about some of this other stuff, which may or may not be fine, but is really tinkering around the edges. I mean, Roger, it's a valid point, isn't it? I think we're at a 16-year high now for unemployment in this country, especially for the young. There are fears of a lost generation, uh, effectively. What can the government do to help bring that level down? Well, I don't think it can actually do a very great deal. Now, I, I would actually go some of the way with Jonathan, in the sense that I would favour uh, more emphasis on infrastructure spending and a, a serious attempt to get the private sector to invest more. Uh, and that may take a little bit of public money. But the biggest contribution that the government can make to bring the unemployment down in the long term is getting this economy right. And it certainly would do itself or the unemployed no favours if whatever measures it adopted led to a loss of confidence in the markets. And we then had a financial crisis. Now, Jonathan and I agree, I think, on that principle. It's all a question of how far you can go without making that a significant danger. He thinks the scope is bigger than I do. And, and so, Jonathan, I mean, is that something to be wary of? The, well, the well, impact that if, if the UK's debt servicing costs were to rise, you know, suddenly it would be a very different story. The Chancellor perhaps does have some breathing space now, but that could all come to an end. Um, yes, I think there's considerable breathing space, and the markets have shown that over the, the last year or so. We've seen gilt yields fall to really record lows as a consequence of economic weakness and as a consequence of the fact that businesses 
uh, as you said before, are saving rather than spending. What we want to do is get them spending in the end. And I think actually Roger and I are in much the same territory on this. Um, a targeted boost of infrastructure spending would not offend the markets and would actually do something about creating jobs and hopefully getting the private sector to invest as well. Is that what needs to happen to give the private sector, to give business, businesses the confidence to actually invest the money that is just sitting on their balance sheets? Well, I think the problem is actually bigger than that. It, but it, it, the question, though, is, is really rather, given that so much that, that, that is affecting us is coming at us from the outside, about which the Chancellor can do absolutely nothing at all, the right question to ask is, what can he do? What can he usefully do? I don't think it's a position where the Chancellor can transform the economy or transform investment. He simply can't do that. But if there is scope to make a bit of a difference, then surely he ought to take that scope. But that, that is a big risk to say the scope to make a bit of a difference and yet you would be you know, spending money and you just can't determine how effective the, the end result would be. Well, let's be clear about this. I mean, I, I'm not talking about significant amounts of money. Okay. I don't, how I much don't are you think... talking about? Yeah. A, few, a few billion, okay. a, a very little. And indeed, this is, I think, the, the main story to come out of today. All sorts of news channels and newspapers, including this particular channel, will be trumpeting these various measures as though they're actually quite big. And frankly, just about everything is going to add up to peanuts. He's oh, playing we won't be trumpeting anything, Mr. Booth. Not playing, to worry. We're going to be. He's playing with very small fact. amounts of money. I think the really big influence on yeah. both his budget and the economy is what's going on outside. Okay, so if what's going on outside is the big influence, then Jonathan, what is the point? I mean, how much difference can fiscal stimulus make? Um, I think it, make, uh, it cannot transform the economy overnight, and Roger's quite right about that, and we do need to be wary about what's going on abroad and be wary of the risk. But you could make a significant difference. As I said, uh, um, you could spend money both on a temporary tax cut for low pay people and on infrastructure, and it would not affect the fiscal rules. In my view, it wouldn't affect market confidence. We've seen, after all, remember that this government, when it came in, said that planning to only have a deficit by 2014-15 would be a disaster. Our credit rating would go out the window. We have the quotes on file. You must have the quotes on file. Our credit rating would be downgraded. The markets would lose confidence. Interest rates would shoot up if we only managed to have the deficit by 2014-15. Well, what's their plan now? It's to do exactly that. Because of economic weakness, they've had to revise the figures. So they're actually borrowing just as much as they planned to borrow before this fiscal consolidation problem. And have the markets panicked? Have interest rates shot up? On the contrary, interest rates have fallen precisely because people are looking for safe places to put their money, like UK government bonds. And my view is that that's actually what drives the markets rather than a few billion here or there on spending.